All right, so I wanted to hopefully quickly add a video response to this question posted on Quora. I answered the question yesterday and it's already gotten 23 upvotes, so it deserves a little more context with a video response. The question itself was posted by Dharmesh Shah, who's the CTO and founder of HubSpot.com, the popular marketing automation suite. Now Dharmesh asks, how should an early stage B2B SaaS startup under a million in ARR, annual recurring revenue, balance inbound marketing with outbound sales. It says that 95% of our revenue comes from outbound sales. We've been active with content marketing, but should we put more resources behind inbound marketing? Now let's kind of uh, break this in half first. Um, he mentions that 95% of our revenue comes from outbound sales and also that he's been active with content marketing. So in order to know for sure that 95% of your revenue is coming from outbound sales, 5% did not. Now that 5% can come from referrals. It can come from uh, maybe uh, previous customers from the old brand, who knows? Um, but let's assume playing devil's advocates that uh, he has an automated funnel where customers can create accounts without ever talking to sales. Uh, meaning they can come through an article they found on your blog through a search term. Uh, they can click the link to get started and they can go through some sort of a pricing page uh, and a, an account creation. And then they enjoyed the initial steps of the product um, and maybe their 14 day trial, what have you. And they added their credit card and became a customer. So let's assume that some of those 5% did something along those lines and uh, created their account without ever talking to a salesperson or engaging with a salesperson through a cold email sequence. Let's assume that in that assumption. Um, and in this realm, I would push back on Darmesh and um, ask, how he knows that 95% of the revenue comes from outbound sales. Sure, you can say, this are, here are the customers from uh, this month or this quarter, and uh, those customers uh, were reached out to by the sales department. But what you cannot always accurately attribute is how many of those customers first saw some sort of a brand impression, whether it was from a, uh, a blog post a PR, um, a PR campaign or press release, um, some sort of a video that you have on your YouTube channel, um, a product hunt page, something like that. You can't always um, know that these customers did not see any of that. So saying that 95% of your revenue came from outbound sales, a portion of that could have first engaged with your brand through content. You just didn't correctly attribute it. So it's just get that out of the way. I didn't add it in this answer, so I'll edit it here in a minute and add it. But um, that's first and foremost what I would suggest the way uh, you actually interpret this question. Now, uh, what is inbound marketing? I added a definition here from HubSpot's website. Um, but inbound marketing is essentially creating um, brand impressions through content. So you're creating a way to pull customers into your funnel through content like blogs, um, articles, obviously, product hunt campaigns, social media posts, these kinds of things. Um, that's your inbound marketing activity. And Darmesh wants to know if he should be doing more of it. And if you know anything about HubSpot, you probably know how much inbound marketing they do and how much inbound marketing they rely on a ton. So I think he's more placing this question, not asking it specifically for himself. Um, now, in answering all core questions, I like to add some assumptions so that I can be um, providing some value to more people reading this question. Uh, if, I, if I keep it too general, then not all of you will find value and uh, the ones that find some value, it won't be as effective as if I add a, a assumption that can make sure that this is actionable. And the assumption that I'll add is uh, assuming that this premise, uh, the company that's in question here is not upstream going after enter enterprise clients. They are still in the early stages of their business life cycle 
and focusing on mid-market clientele at lower price points. So let's assume that that'll help us kind of frame the answer. Now, I won't go into detail with these. Um, you can read the answer if you are very interested, but um, I'll kind of give you the premise on how I answer this. Um, the first thing I spoke about is hedging sales efforts with marketing efforts. And that's regardless of how well your sales efforts seem to be working. Because even if they're working well, there are always going to be lows. There's always going to be turnover. There's always going to be macro factors that impact how well those sales efforts are doing. So you need to hedge those by creating an inbound marketing strategy, a content strategy uh, to overcome future lows. Uh, as well, uh, if, if there are no future lows, you can just add additional lead um, and tr leads and traffic to your funnel through these inbound efforts. The second thing that I mentioned is uh, something that I'm really passionate about. It's, it's trying to become the thought leader uh, with regards to the topics and the pain points that your SaaS product solves. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's super important, especially when you're trying to gain product market fit at the earliest stages, that you are your own brand advocate. So whether it's you, the CEO, or your co-founder, or one of your initial hires, ideally all of you, but you will be thought leaders uh, with regards to the pain points. Um, so if you're a marketing automation platform, you should be out there answering questions, talking about marketing automation, and serving those brand impressions from your personal profile uh, while your marketing team is serving the brand impressions as your, uh, as your company profile, as your brand, right? So especially more and more the, this day and age, people are buying the founders and the people that are involved in the brand, not just the value proposition of the brand. Uh, they first buy from you, not always uh, the brand and the features and uh, the value proposition itself. Um, so be thought leaders with regards to the pain points that your potential customers have. Um, now, finally, uh, treat any new marketing strategy as a proof of concept and wait until you've proven out that strategy and the pieces that exist in that strategy before you go and you hire the team and scale it. Now, I've learned the hard way from this and um, in the last couple of years, I have not replicated that, thankfully. Um, so what this means is essentially, if you have a new marketing agenda, whether it's content, SEO, um, trying out PPC, whatever that is, it's new. You've never done it before. Um, as a founder, it's hard to do this, but you know the first step is not to go and hire a full-time person that specializes in PPC. Um, the first step would be to find contractors cannot manage contractors, meaning you don't have the time and the understanding of the issue and the strategy and the, um, and the course of action, the deep understanding there, uh, then look to an agency, but contract out those initial tests, right? Because um, you're going to want to prove that concept before you hire that person as a full-time employee of the company. Because what tends to happen uh, is that your initial tests, whether they go great or uh, they do not go great, um, you are going to have other pieces that need to be built around that initial strategy in order for that strategy to work. So what you need is agencies or contractors testing out each channel, providing that product market fit for the actual marketing strategy itself. Does that fit with your brand? And does that fit with your current status and the current stage and the current funnel and all that stuff? And once it is proven effective, then you can look at making it a part of your actual um, team structure as, as a skill that you bring into the organization as a full-time W-2 employee and at this stage, there's probably equity and all that good stuff to go along with it. So 
uh, the potential downsides of bringing in someone full time to run a strategy that you're testing are huge. So contract those out, um, hire an agency, prove out those strategies and those concepts. And once you have an idea of what your marketing mix is going to be, then go ahead and find someone with those skill sets to come into the organization as a full-time employee and execute. Um, so I explain in detail what I mean, and um, hopefully you read that and get a lot out of it. So thank you again, and um, I look forward to doing another one of these soon.